Hello, everybody. Before we get into this crazy wackadoo story about the Nutter Butter TikTok, I do want to take a moment to talk to you about our upcoming event, our panel on Gnostic TV called Tales from the Dark Side. This is obviously a panel event full of really big names, really big names in the occult who have come together to talk about their experiences in the occult. So if this is something you're interested, if you like the learning about the occult and learning about the mysteries of the world and what is hidden from sight, then this is an event that you are going to really, really be interested in coming to. It's going to air on Friday, October the 11th at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time on Gnostic TV. Once it releases, it will be available forever for anybody who has a ticket to the event. The price of these tickets go to supporting the survivors of the occult. And so hold on for one second while we play our commercial before we get into the crazy Nutter Butter TikTok. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me down in the comment section below. Otherwise, all the information, including a 50% off coupon for the ticket to this panel event is in the description box below. Hello, everybody. If you are a fan of the occult, especially the darker side of the occult, if you like learning about the stuff that is done in the shadows, boy, do we have an event for you. We want to welcome you to Tales of Survival from the Dark Side. Wow. What a lineup of speakers we have. I've had the privilege of meeting incredible survivors on my channel, uh, Aquarius Rising Africa, over the past four years. And it's been an amazing journey for me to bring them over and just share with more new people sharing their stories. Now, guys, this is going event is going to be held over on Gnostic TV. And Indeed. tickets are are now on sale they're 50 percent off right shanti so we have a link yeah. below um and also if you want to watch the full trailer of the event which cannot be shown on youtube you can hop over to gnostic tv and watch that trailer as well we're looking to release this panel live on gnostic tv on friday october the 11th at 11 a.m eastern time so tickets are 50 percent off and yeah. once you once you bought your ticket you can watch as many shows as you want and you can watch them as many times as you want support our survivors they deserve to be heard and there's nothing better more healing for a survivor for a survivor than to be told i believe you so thank you guys um if you have any questions please make sure to ask shanti or me down in the comment section be section below otherwise we look forward to seeing you guys over on gnostic tv thank you so much bye everybody Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. You guys, there is something wackadoo going on with Nutter Butter on TikTok. And today we're going to talk about it. Now, this isn't actually a deep dive per se, because I want to get your feedback because I'm not really sure what to do with this information or even how to begin researching this information. If you joined us 
earlier this week on Aquarius Rising Africa, I spoke about how I am a Scorpio moon. My sun sign is Aquarius, my rising sign is Leo, and my moon sign is Scorpio. And that means that I am highly sensitive and highly emotional, yes, but it also means that I am a really good at basically researching. With something that I didn't know about Scorpio moons is that we tend to be really good researchers, but that absolutely made sense to me when I found that out because that's basically what I do here on YouTube. And again, as many of you know, I love to research and I'm good at researching. I know what to follow. I'm, I'm able to look at information and I'm able to figure out what part of the information I need to follow and what part of the information I don't need to follow. However, again, with this particular story, I don't even know where to start. But before we get into it, I do want to give a, a special shout out to all of my patrons and my producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, you guys know that this work is really, really hard hard to do and because of the matrix that we're living in um we don't i don't make really any money doing this so i thank you so much to my patrons and my producers for helping me out so that i can continue to do this work and we can continue to have this discourse together over these super weird things that are presenting themselves as we start to watch the collapse of society so thank you again so much to my producers and my patrons. If you guys would like to help support this channel and join our Patreon and or our producer community, of course, there is a link down in the description box below. There's also links to our sponsors down in the description box below, including Spooky2 and Miramate. Love those companies. We also have a link to Gnostic TV. And as you guys know, we are about to launch a huge panel on Gnostic TV with a bunch of people who are survivors of the dark cult. Um, again, we have to put that panel over on Gnostic TV because of the subjects that we're going to be talking about. So if you are interested, if you're somebody who likes to learn about the occult and likes kind of the macabre stuff, that might be something that you would absolutely love to be a part of. Again, links to tickets for that are down in the description box below. All right, so let's talk about Nutter Butter. Now, I'm assuming most people know what a Nutter Butter cookie is, but if you don't, Nutter Butter is actually one of my favorite cookies. <laughs> we actually have some Nutter Butters. I have some <laughs> in my pantry. Um, me and 12-year-olds alike. Uh, it is basically a peanut butter cookie. And it's in the shape of a nut, a peanut. Now, down here in the South, peanuts are a big deal. We do hard-boiled peanuts. We, we really, I mean, listen, if you're ever in the South and you see somebody standing on the side of the road selling hard-boiled peanuts, get some. They are so good. They are so delicious. I, I just, it's, if you're from another part of the world and you want to start a business that you think will kick off, Hard bowl peanuts, my friends. Like, you can find lots of recipes online. But nonetheless, Nutter Butters are this particular cookie. It's like a graham cracker type cookie with a sandwich cookie with peanut butter in the middle. Now, with that being said, as I mentioned, it is one of my favorite cookies. It has always been one of my favorite cookies. If you stop by a gas station, you can get like a four pack of Nutter Butters. Um, of course, you can get the big packs at the grocery store. Um, for me, as many of you guys know, I or maybe I think I've mentioned this. I don't know if I have. I whatever. Um, I'm not a chocolate fan. I know that sounds blasphemous. I know that sounds crazy, but I am not a fan of chocolate at all. Um, I absolutely, when I think about chocolate cake or chocolate ice cream, like that grosses me out. I would rather eat Brussels sprouts than eat a chocolate cake or chocolate ice cream. No, thank you. I am absolutely not a fan of the taste of chocolate. The only time I actually like chocolate is if it's mixed with something else. Like I like Butterfingers, for example. I love that candy bar Butterfinger or Reese's Pieces, like the little, almost like M&Ms, but they're like peanut butter with chocolate surrounding them. So basically the only chocolate I'll eat is if there's a dominating flavor that kind of masks the taste of chocolate because I absolutely cannot stand chocolate. Again, if you had a Snickers bar or Skittles, I'm going to pick the Skittles any day over the Snickers bar. That's just my taste bud. So that makes sense for me because I'm not a fan of like chocolate chip cookies. I'd rather have like a sugar cookie. I just do not like chocolate at 
all. And it has nothing to do with the American chocolate not being as good as other. I, I will say, yes, chocolate in England is a lot better than in America, but I still don't like it. Like, I'm still just not going. I'm just not a fan of chocolate. So many people in my life have tried to correct that and like, oh, well, you just don't know real. And I'm like, no, I do not like, I do not like the taste of chocolate. I just, I don't like coffee either. I don't like the taste of it. Never have. I'm 41 years old and I'm not a coffee drinker. I just do not like that taste. So again, Nutter Butters have been a cookie that uh, throughout my life that I have gravitated to because it's not chocolate. Here's something interesting too when it comes to taste buds for those of you guys who think you can like sway somebody to like a certain food. I remember when I was in the eighth grade, we did this experiment in my, my science class. There were like 10, 15 kids. And the, the teacher handed us like this little tiny, it almost looked like one of those Listerine things, like sheets you put in your mouth. It wasn't though. This was long before Listerine had their little sheets, but because I'm old, but it was like this little tiny dissolvable sheet that he had each of us put in our mouths and taste. And he said, most of you are going to taste a very sour or bitter taste off of this sheet of paper or this dissolvable sheet. But very few of you, if any of you, are going to taste absolutely nothing. Well, we get the sheets of paper and I tasted absolutely nothing. Nothing. It was me and three other people in the class, four of us in total, that tasted nothing. And then the teacher had myself and the other three kids. I remember who they were, but I'm not going to say their names. So I don't want to dox anybody. They're not public people. Um, he brought us to the front of the class. And we sat on stools and the, the class asked us questions because their reaction to this piece of paper was so shocking. Like they immediately were like, Bleh, like gross. And the four of us were like, we taste absolutely nothing. Well, we got into the conversation of blood types. And as you guys know, I've talked a lot about blood types. I'm O negative. We talked a lot about the rhesus negative. Um, in the greater population of the world, people who are rhesus negative only make up about 15% of the population. Most rhesus negative people are in places of power in our world. That's not every rhesus negative, of course. I'm just saying generally speaking. And basically what my teacher was saying was that the four of us obviously had a particular blood type that made us taste things differently. Now, looking back at that, I can say that was the four of us were rhesus negative. Now, I know I am. I'm O negative. I don't know what the other three kids are, but obviously he was saying it has something to do with our blood type. Now, if there were about 10 kids, I went to a very small um, very yuppie, very expensive private school. And I absolutely believe without a shadow of a doubt, that the school I went to very much is a part of the Alumashmati. But that's a story for a different day. But with that being said, with let's say there were 10 kids in the class, I can't remember the exact number of kids in the science class, four of us could not taste it. That means 40% of that class was obviously RH negative. That's a really high percentage for that particular demographic because it's only 15% of the world population. However, because it was a very yuppie, private, expensive school, that makes more sense to me that there would be a higher percentage of, of RH negative kids there because the RH negatives, generally speaking, come from a very aristocratic bloodline. Again, I know, don't be commenting this in the comment section. We, we, I feel like we're going back in, we're getting dumber as we go on in time. Just because, just because something is a generalization does not mean that there aren't people who are peasants who are also RH negative. So please don't comment that in the comment section. We're talking generally speaking. This is where this bloodline comes from. This is why all the royals are RH negative, while all of our presidents are RH negative. All of them. Trump, Biden, Obama, Bush, Clinton, they're all RH negatives, okay? So it does make sense that there would be a higher percentage in a private school of RH negatives, statistically speaking. So when we talk about taste with food, that experiment we did when I was what, like 14 years old in the eighth grade explains a lot to me now as to why certain people gravitate towards certain tasting foods. Why, for example, I absolutely cannot effing stand chocolate. Cannot stand it. My boyfriend, who is also RH negative, doesn't like chocolate either. That was one of the first things we bonded over, that we both did not like chocolate ice cream or 
chocolate cake. Ugh, it's just disgusting, disgusting. And so I've often wondered, we know that RH negatives, I'll say allegedly, just because, you know, the powers that be, um, can't get certain um, sicknesses. We're immune to certain sicknesses. I'm not going to say which ones, but there is information out there if you want to look it up for yourself. We also know that RH negatives um, cannot be hypnotized. So there's a, lots of other things with RH negatives too. So it got me wondering, like, are they putting certain things in foods and I don't even think this is a theory. I think we all kind of can agree that this might actually be a reality to try to hypnotize the mind. And is that why people like me are not attracted to common candy bars? I don't know. This is just a theory anyway. But going back to the use of food as a way to create a certain type of, of hypnotism with people, this again brings me back to the Nutter Butter TikTok. Now, a lot of people, a lot of the articles I read about the Nutter Butter TikTok, a lot of people believe that all this is is just genius marketing. And that could very well be what's going on it could be just genius marketing however some people think that there is a more sinister reason uh, reasoning as to why the nutter butter TikTok is what it is so let's take a look together at this nutter butter TikTok. <laughs> like oh and, and in fact okay so they often often talk about how cats will just like they'll like fade in or click in for like a brief second there will also be like a cat um i mean sour patch kids hey what I love this comment right here. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it on my YouTube because, you know, but that comment is great. This comment is great. I mean, this is wild, you guys. Let's keep going. Let's look at more of their um, videos. <laughs> Like, what is this, you guys? What is this? And the fact that other products are responding, are these products that are all owned by Nabisco? <laughs> Look at this. I rebuke this. All right, you guys, let's keep going. Like what? I don't even, I got no words. Like I have no words. Again, is this just brilliant marketing or is there something more, more sinister? Again, all these freaking wheat thins, <laughs> I'm blogging off. My mom growing up, my mother was always on diets and we grew up literally on tab. If you guys remember the, the soda tab, the first diet soda and wheat thins. A sweetest fish has now entered the conversation. Love what you've done with the place. <laughs> 
this crosses a boundary I didn't know I had. Yeah, this people are having like legit like reactions to this page. This is just crazy. <laughs> And if you guys notice, Life Church, that's interesting. Life Church, you're invited. Interesting. Sour Patch Kids comments on everything that they put. Now we've got Subway entering the conversation. Mom, can you pick me up? I'm scared. All right, let's keep going, guys. Let's look at more videos here. Las Vegas has entered the conversation. Even I'm concerned. That's Las Vegas. Oh, wow. This is so strange. And who is this Aiden, Nadia, these characters that Nutter Butter has created? The Nutter Butter Man? As of recently, we've been made aware of the Nutter Butter social media accounts and we just wanted to take the time to apologize to everyone who's had to see it. This is <laughs> As of recently, we've been made aware <laughs> I mean, this is crazy, y'all. Like, this is crazy. And I cannot believe that all these other, all these other brands, Bounty Paper Towels, which is actually owned by the Coca-Cola family, if you guys didn't know that, is Bounty. Um, and this is what my dreams look like. I mean, what is going on? What, Burt Bees have now entered the conversation? Revlon? Here's Subway again. This is absolutely wild, you guys. I don't know what to make of this. Again, this could be nothing but purely, purely some genius kid, some Gen Zer who has come up with brilliant marketing that could literally be what it is. But I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. They're following 11 people and they have 1.1 million followers. That's super interesting. And um, what's seven plus four? 11. So we have 11, 11, 11. That could just be a coincidence. I don't know. I mean, this one, they're not even showing us. So I cannot wait to hear you guys. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and your opinions on this. I recently, oh, hold on one second, guys. I'm still making sounds. So I have recently just opened up a TikTok account. I'm having so much fun. Make sure you go over and follow me on TikTok because I'll be putting up little shorts as well. Um, but I can't wait to hear your thoughts and opinions. What do you guys think about this? What do you think going, is going on with the Nutter Butter? We'll call it the Nutter Butter conspiracy. Like what is happening? Still love my Nutter Butters though. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon.